Always good to be here in Jupiter, Florida. It's Cardinals Insider at the Ballpark Fantasy Camp Edition, along with Ken Daly and Rick Horton. I'm Brett McMillan. And guys, uh, it's just fun to be out here doing some baseball activities. What do you enjoy most about Fantasy Camp, Rick? I actually say, Brett, that it's good for my soul to be here because it connects us around baseball that we, of course, all love. We've been involved in it our whole life, but relationally connects us too. people across decades that maybe played in different eras of Cardinal baseball, but still have had the same experience. And of course, the campers just totally love this. I mean, it's it's kind of something they look forward to uh, throughout the entire year. I see a lot of those guys on the road during the year that that just come up and say hi and say that it was the time of their life. And, and uh, several of them have been back uh, 15, 20 times. Ken, you are managing this year so you're getting to meet the campers some other alumni on your team just what's that like to have that mix of uh, of folks <laughs> well uh you know the, the ball sounds a little different off the alumni bats than it does off the campers bats but uh, it's just a good mix uh it's fun to get the guys together and just have them enjoy the game uh, you know the campers that are here just love the game of baseball they love the cardinals and you know, they just want to get out and compete, and, uh, you know, it's just a fun time, and everybody has a, a big time. I've noticed a lot of people uh, leaving their feet to catch a fly ball, which is always a little adventure. Well, Cardinals are all about fundamentals, and, and you know, fundamentals are, well, they're a little lucid sometimes here at the, these games, but it's not about effort, and, and honestly, the, at the end of the day, it's not, you know, not just the baseball. It, it, again, it's the it's the moments that you remember. I had a camper tell me today, and his eyes were as big as balloons, and he said, I just sat and talked to Ted Simmons for 30 minutes about baseball. I can't believe I got a chance to do that. And Hall of Famers are a big part of this. Uh, the fact that Ted Simmons is here and Whitey Herzog, Ozzy Smith, you know, that's that's a big deal to these guys that have been Cardinal fans for a long time. Okay, what's it like for you guys to see Whitey rolling around? We got to, to talk to him here at the desk a little bit earlier today. Um, you know, you've got a lot of memories with him, but to have him here and still have those touch points, what's that mean to yeah, you? Yeah, well, I, I had a bench coach come over today and said he got to talk to Whitey and Ozzy for 20 minutes. And so, you know, I mean, he was just, when do you get that? You know, you don't. And so it's just a big thrill for him. And, of course, you know, Whitey is – the best manager I ever played for and just I mean he was so ahead of the game you know he was two or three innings ahead of where he was coach managing at and of course Ozzy being the better shortstop maybe the best ever but uh, all you do is stay stay out of the way and let them make the plays but uh, it's great to be around them again it's good to see him down here and it just it's just a fun time. I've heard people say Whitey had an intuition almost with the game where he could call you into his office and say, this is what's going to happen tonight and then tomorrow and then next week we're going to do this here with this guy. Was it really like that? I mean, did he see the game that way? Yeah, he, he did that with me at one point. He, he, when he came out to the mound to take you out, which is not your favorite time, to, especially if you're a starter and you're getting taken out, he'd come out and he'd say, he'd say, okay, so on Tuesday you're going to throw a bullpen, we're going to be in Pittsburgh, and I'm going to start against the Mets the following month. He already had that figured out. And so uh, I think Whitey is a – we played bridge with him a lot. I mean, he was the guy that would play bridge with us in the clubhouse. It was something that Dan Quisenberry uh, brought to the team. And that's an intuitive game. It's a thinking-ahead game. But, you know, you think about chess the same way. But Whitey is a master – at thinking ahead, an absolute master, and and I think uh, a lot of the guys that that played for Whitey became coaches or managers and and stayed in the game because you learned so much for him watching him do what he did. Ken, you were smiling. You yeah, said. you know, you, we brought a bridge, and, and Whitey, if he had his way, he'd play four or five cards and throw them in, you know, and say, oh, I, you know, I was going to get twelve there, and so he's like, no, no, <laughs> you're going to play him out. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't have transportation or something can happen, but. Uh, yeah, he was always thinking, you know, always, like Rick said, in, in bridge, it's a game where you know your transportation, you know what you're going to do, and you can count the tricks. And But, yeah, Rat, Rat liked to just play a few and throw them in, call it good. So <laughs> you had to watch him. <laughs> you two spent a lot of time, not just with Whitey, but with each other in those bullpens in the 80s and early 90s, just to have... I, we don't see that that much in the game today, you know, five, six, seven years. What's that mean to you guys? And all these years later, here you are still sitting in uniform even, you know, uh, kind of as teammates still in this alumni fraternity. Well, we were, we were roommates, number one, and then getting a chance to play together, number two. But, you know, I, I said here when I introduced Ken at the uh, – uh, at the opening banquet here that, you know, Ken is the most underrated postseason pitcher we've had in Cardinal history. You look at his numbers, they're just ridiculously good. He was unhittable uh, when you talk about September and October baseball and uh, being uh, teammates in 85, 87. Uh, Ken and I talked a lot. Now, we'd, times we'd come to the ballpark together, but, you know, different pitchers, he threw very hard. 
I didn't. I'm throwing change-ups and sinkers and sliders, but but we still shared information together. You know, you think about all the analytics in the game today. Well, my analytics were conversations with Ken and John Tudor and other left-handers, Dave LaPointe, about what Daryl Strawberry was doing against you and had what. tell me something. And we were learn experientially from each other. So it's not that, you know, you didn't care about tendencies, but, but ours were more in the narrative form, and it came through uh, being teammates for a long time and, and being taught by people that that really knew the game and, you know, coming up in the game in the minor leagues and in the big leagues, getting uh, really outstanding instruction and being around guys like Bruce Suter, Bob Forsh, that would really teach you the nuances of pitching, uh, but also the nuances of how to be a professional baseball player. Ken, what about for you, this guy sitting to your left? What's he mean? Well, you know, like Rick said, we were roommates. We uh, <clears throat> had Bible study together. I mean, we did a lot of things together, and we still do. Uh, have a little glass of vino every now and again, or, you know. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we bounce things off of each other uh, out in the bullpen, trying to figure out where where we thought we were going to be, who was going to be up in this situation or whatever. And, and of course, you mentioned Whitey earlier. He always had an open door and would talk to us and said, you know, uh, I know I got used you two innings last night. Can I get an inning tonight, or can I you have two hitters, or you know what, whatever? And so you always kind of knew what your role was that night, and you just waited for the phone to ring. There's a lot to love about baseball. I think one of the things so many of us love is that there's just so many life lessons. And for a bullpen guy, I think that that's the, at the highest level because sometimes you got to flush it. You know, you have a oh, bad boy. night, and you got to figure out how to be better and and forget about it the next day. But it's easy for me to say that having never pitched at that level. How do you actually do that? Well, I think that's where you really rely on your teammates and your, the relationships of people that are kind of have your back in your corner. I mean, people, you know, you have a bad day. And, and if you've never had a bad day pitching in the big leagues, you haven't pitched there long enough. I mean, it's going to happen. I don't care who you are. Your Hall of Famers have bad days. So the point is you have one of those days. You know, one of the things that we would do is every person on the pitching staff, but especially the bullpen, would come up and say something to you. Uh, every time you had an appearance. And you think about the bullpen back then, there were probably five of us. There wasn't eight guys in the bullpen. There were five. So, you know, you, you had very close, very close-knit conversations in the bullpen, sometimes about the game, sometimes not. But we would, when the game is over, if a guy had a bad day, everybody would make a point to pat you on the back, to just say whatever it is, you just come by and say hello. And, I mean, it's something to say I'm, I'm with you and you know this is not going to happen again and we'll be behind you and we're not giving up on you you know I on my thumb of my glove I had new day wrote on there and it was just to remind me every day was a new day uh, no matter how good or how bad you were the day before it's a new day and you have to do what you do to get people out and so it was a new day and that you just take it one pitch at a time one hitter at a time and and try and do what you're trying to do is get people out but uh, it doesn't work that way every time but you know, whether it was good or bad, the next day is a new day. You try it again. Excellent. Guys, thanks so much. Great to be down here for Fantasy Camp. Great to, to talk about those great 80s Cardinals teams. We appreciate your time. It's uh, always good to talk baseball here on Cardinals Insider. That's all for now from Jupiter, Florida.